So hopefully you guys know who we are we by now. Hi. I'm Maddie. I'm Renee. I'm Meg, who just hopped in <laughs> with no makeup. <laughs> You're beautiful. I'm feeling it, right? Feel like so. It makes me feel better today. <laughs> this will not come out of my hair, by the way. I've lemoned it, and I might get fired, but we'll see. I'm not sure. Okay. That's the color that stayed in my daughter's hair, who has, like, she got beautiful yeah. hair, and that's, like, the remaining color. There's nothing else, but I'll just say I swam in the pool. Okay. Trying to find a list of questions that everyone asked us. Thank you so much, everybody, for bringing those questions for us. Where did it go? Can you guys hear us okay? I tend to yell because I'm a teacher, and that's what I do. Oh, my God. Very I know, cool. Ricky, but my mom said that she did one one time, and it took all of the color out of her hair entirely, so it was, like, just stripped. She had black hair, and her whole head was white when she was done. So I'm kind of uh, – that's my last resort. Unless they tell me at work, like, you need to remove it. I'm just going <laughs> to pretend it's not there and be like, what? Green? What? Oh, my God. There is green in my hair. I don't know where that came from. Okay, perfect. All right. Here we go. Perfect. We're all ready, guys. Got, like, 10 people, 12 people. Yay. Hi, Can we everybody. Can who's here? Tell us if you're here. Yeah. Everyone say hi and, like, say where you're from so we can see who's here. Okay, minutes. We got 12 people. Okay. We are, if you're wondering, at the co-op. It is very exciting. Um, but neither of us have refrigeration. Yeah. So we couldn't really buy anything. Yeah. I still have one more train to catch and then a bus and then a, I don't know what the metro is in, in San Francisco to get to the airport. Park. So I've been traveling from Vancouver, Canada. So I get to saw, I saw Meg yesterday. Yesterday? No, the day before now. Um, <laughs> just outside. Seattle, and then I got to see Maddie in Sacramento. So we're in Sacramento Ooh. right now. Um, and the then, capital, which is not that yay. fabulous. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so just doing the big West Coast trip. The West Coast. Sorry, Jennifer. Perfect. Munich, West Coast wow. Coast. Europe. Luxembourg, wow. Cool. Cool. What time is Southwest it there? Southwest Florida. Like 12 hours ahead. Crazy. I Thank you for joining us from the other side of the world. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, great. Well, we'll get started. Um, so our first uh, question. Okay, macro basics. So start with the macro basics. Yeah. This is this is like Maddie and her little like thing like that. What is that? <laughs> the, um, my my POV. Yeah. My stick. So <laughs> so your your macros are basically just at the basic level. Your fats, your protein, and your carbs. And obviously we count net carbs because we like fiber. Um, so your net carbs are going to be your carbs minus your fiber equals your net carb. I personally believe you should have about 50 to 75 grams of protein unless you're super crazy like weightlifter and then you can talk to Jennifer because I can't lift weights. <laughs> um, I can't do any workout. So if you're wondering can you do keto without working out, you can. Um, and fat, you're going to want at least equal your protein. So if you have 60 grams of protein, you want 60 grams of fat, and then you can go up to two to one, so 120 grams of fat. Eat fat if you're hungry. If you're not hungry, it's not like I have to meet my fat. Oh, my gosh, I have to eat 30 more grams of fat, and then you're, like, drinking MCT oil and barfing everywhere. Like, don't, don't do that. And then I do under 20 net carbs still. It's been 16 months. I've tried to go up. I ate a ton ton of vegetables and guac last night and I paid for it today even though it was just vegetable carbs I can't go over 20 um but a lot of people can't like yeah like me so it's like for me I'm in maintenance now so I lost like over 20 pounds um and so I'm I could probably lose some more weight but it's not my main focus right now so I am averaging between 40 and 50 net per day um and I'm maintaining my weight loss so I'm I'm a cook so I like to cook and I cook a lot of different things you've probably seen a lot of my recipes and things um so for me, this is a lifestyle, and because I don't have any underlying medical issues, I don't have insulin resistance, I have a really great glucose metabolism, I'm really able to be comfortable at my 40 to 50 with my maintenance. I did lose most of my weight between 20 and 30. So it's like, if you're like feeling good, and you can try experimenting by adding a little bit more, um, but what it really comes down to is that your protein is like, is it always have to hit your protein. So get, figure out what your protein is. I use, um, for a regular person, regular activity level, it's 
0.4 times your weight. So like if I'm 150 pounds, if I times that by 0.4, it's 60 grams per day. So my protein is 60 grams per day. If you're super active lifting weights, go to 0.5, um, or if you're lifting really heavy weights, even up to 0.6. So you really want to be between 0.4 and 0.6 in your weight in pounds. So um, that's your protein. You have to hit your protein. Carbs, again, like if you're like Maddie and feel really good at net 20. Um, like net, net 20. 14 at 16 is where like my, yeah. my golden zone. But that is super, super hard unless you're doing a protein shake every day, which Maddie does. Which you should do. Everyone's seen her amazing like shake Matt she does Chino, every day. Right? I think Ricky called it. So if you want to try doing that, we, we will need a protein shake. 100% you will need a protein shake a day, otherwise it's going to be like impossible. So Destiny said the weight you are, not the weight you want to be. So that 0.4 is yes. the weight you currently It's your current are. weight, yes, for sure. Um, there really are different calculations ba based on um, uh, like actual body weight. Like your, There's lots of different calculations, but I find for most people that one will work. There are different ways to figure it out, but for most people, that's a great ballpark figure. Yeah. What your actual weight is, and then like like 0. 0.4, 5, or 6. Mm -hmm. um, Shannon, I just want to say counting macros is super simple um, once you get started. <laughs> so once you're first, used to it, right? It's super daunting. Like I just downloaded the, what's that? Chronometer. Name? Chronometer. I want to call it chronometer, but I don't know. <laughs> that's right. Um, it's like, and you have to like start over with all your food, tomorrow. but then it takes like five minutes mm -hmm. every day to log. So it's not that that crazy. It doesn't take that much time. People yeah. say I don't want to track because it's just another thing to do, but it keeps me like if I am going to eat something for lunch, I want to plan out my dinner. I don't want to end up with one net carb for dinner and then not be able to eat anything. So I adjust throughout the day. Like when I sat down, I had some pecans. What is the first thing I did? Opened my app and logged my pecans. So mm -hmm. I knew where I was for the rest of the day. Yeah. Meg, where do you um, stand on, on carbs right now? Where do, where do I float? I float, I think like yeah majority is going to be probably like the the 20 net but I would say like on days where I'm a bit more flexible where I actually feel okay is the 20 to 30 um and then you know I also incorporate carb refeeds my cat's gonna like pop into the hey buddy um <laughs> <laughs> he's like really happy that we're home from vacation um but I find like where I really like to be is between that like 20 and and 30 and it feels it feels comfortable um and then as far as like going beyond that I mean it really depends on what carbs I'm incorporating I mentioned in my Facebook live with Renee that like when I do my carb refeeds, like I don't do any sugar still. Like I just, I can't, it seems to like totally suck my, my energy that I'm loving from being in ketosis, like totally out. So yeah, I like the, what's that? You're um, cutting out a little bit. It's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, so yeah, like probably like hover around 20, but between 20 to 30. Perfect. And so that's the thing with keto. There's a million different ways to do keto. So if something isn't working, change it up and try something new. But if it's working, then stick with it. Like that's what Maddie, like she's found something that works for her really well and she feels amazing. So she's doing it. I found something that's found it's worked really well for me. So I'm going to keep doing it. But if it's not working, and same thing with like all your food sensitivities, if yeah. you feel bad eating something, then stop and take it out and see how you like add it back later and see if you feel it. Like Maddie with her soy, like she's tried to take the soy out, reintroducing it, and it, it doesn't know. work. So same thing, like I'm sensitive to gluten. So it's like, I don't eat gluten. And like, sometimes I will eat it. Like there's a lot of like the faux meats and stuff have gluten. I'll try it. I regret it later, but you know, it's something that I can deal with. So you have to figure out what works for you. And then like, don't worry about what other people are doing. Just kind of learn from their experience. And uh, just, it's all a big experiment, right? So, oh, we got there's a question. a real long comment. Um, wow. Yes, um, I always talk about how when you're really high carb, so when you say you're a low carb vegan, like the vegans kind of shun you away. And then when you say you're keto, it's like bacon, bacon, bacon. And then you say, well, I'm vegan keto.
uh, data. So let's try this. All right. Can you guys see it? Are we no, good? it's all okay. good. All it's right. all good. Woo. Yes, sorry, the Wi-Fi yeah, um, kicked us off, so we're just going to ah. uh, 4G it, so. Uh-oh, okay. look at all these comments. Okay, are we good now? Give us a thumbs up if, uh, if we're back on. Can you hear us? Mic check, one, two. I rapped last night at karaoke, impressed on my coworkers. Uh-oh, it's still not connecting. Anybody there, can you see me? Oh, okay. Yay. Okay. okay. <laughs> we have another another question. Let's okay. So our next question. Okay. So we did the macro basics. Everyone's comfortable with that. So our keto basics and go tos. Of, so our like uh, easy keto tips for basically when you start and maybe like go to meals. Um, so for me, my two go tos would be chia pudding. Make a big chia pudding and just keep it in the fridge. Like just I use a uh, canned coconut milk. Uh, my tip is if you want to try and avoid the artificial sweeteners, find a coconut milk that you love. Like, I found an amazing one. It's called Earth's Choice, and I can just eat it straight out of a can. It's, like, beautiful and thick and creamy and doesn't curdle like some of those other weird canned coconut milks do, um, but it's delicious. And if I mix that with my chia and maybe add a little bit of fruit, I don't even need sweeteners. So find a Find a milk that you love and that you can have the chia pudding and just always have it in the fridge. You can make it a snack. You can make it a pudding. You can put it in your smoothie. Lunch. Yeah. I have it for lunch all the time. You can do, and it's just like flavored all the different ways. Like you can have chocolate one day or peanut butter one day or blueberries one day. So you can really change it up. Um, my other thing is to make like some sort of cracker, like a flax cracker or like an almond cracker. So you can have something crunchy because I'm a crunchy person mm -hmm. and like we don't get a lot of crunchy on this diet. So make some sort of like really simple crackers. There's a million recipes out there just for, like flax crackers, like flackers or almond crackers, flatbreads. Um, and I always have them around. So I, there's no excuse not to eat something. So we that's should go see two. if they have flackers downstairs before we leave. <laughs> so expensive. Just make them yourself. I know. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of work that goes into that. I know, that. right? It's, it's a two-day process for sure. Uh, my go-to, um, if you've spent any time at all in the group, is my shake that I have every morning for breakfast. Um, I live by that shake. So it's basically um, a little more than a cup of Ripple to make it nice and thick. And Ripple has a lot of protein in it. And um, then I also do another almond milk just to thin it out a little bit. Sometimes I toss some coffee in there. And then my protein powder, my fiber powder, some extract, almond or um, orange even, tasted like a creamsicle. I did mint. Um, mint vanilla is really good together. And then what else did I put in that? I think it's just the two. Oh, my MCT oil. Um, tip, do not start with two tablespoons of MCT oil. If you see in my tracker, I have two. That's because I worked up to two. Start with like a teaspoon and work your way up to that or, or else, else it can be unfortunate yeah. bathroom incidents. Yeah. <laughs> or I thought I was really going to have to call it sick to work the first day. Like I called, so I don't remember who I called and I'm like, I think my soul is leaving my body. Like, I don't know what's happening to me right now. So don't start out with two. Yeah. Um, and then blend it with like three or four cups of ice and then it makes like a frappuccino and it makes 64 ounces. So I can drink it pretty much from breakfast until lunch and not want a snack or anything like that. Awesome. And then um, Paul, I just want to, or James Paul, um, you probably are going through um, the keto, keto flu. flu. You need electrolytes. So no salt, Himalayan salt, salt your water, salt your food. Go drink some pickle juice. If you have pickles or sauerkraut in your fridge, go drink some of that juice. Get yourself some salt. Perfect. Um, yeah, James, are you taking any electrolytes right now? Or are you drinking, like, uh, do you have a magnesium supplement or potassium or anything like that right now? Because, like, that's the big one. So electrolytes are magnesium, potassium, and sodium. So on keto, we don't hold any water because we don't have any carbohydrates. Carbo meaning sugar, and then hydrate meaning water. So with no carbohydrate, you've got no water. Um, and so it's really hard for your body to hold on to electrolytes. So we need to supplement with magnesium and potassium and sodium. So salt everything. You have the no salt, right? Yeah, yeah. I have no salt. No so salt. I no salt and Himalayan salt everything. I even yeah. put it in that smoothie I was talking about. I will salt that yeah. um, because there's so much liquid you don't even taste it. Yeah. So yeah, James, um, it'll definitely, if you have pickles, go drink juice right now <laughs> and it will, your headache will It'll help, up. for sure. Yeah, I use a powdered magnesium um, in a, like a drink. It's like one of those fizzy energy drinks that you um it has like b vitamins and uh, magnesium and all this other stuff and i drink that most mornings or you can take like an actual supplement um magnesium i find is not super hard to get in the diet but potassium 
is actually quite hard to get unless you're eating like a whole avocado a day. It's really hard for us to get. Yeah, I eat pretty much. Like, <laughs> I eat a whole avocado pretty much. I'm every like, day. can I have two a day? Yeah. Is that so, too many? So like that, they're the two things you definitely need, and that's your keto flu. Um, and all those uh, symptoms should go away once you start upping your electrolytes again. Yeah, sweet. Oh so yeah, Epsom great. salt baths. Ooh, are salt baths are good for sure. Awesome. All so right. next Let's question. Go see what else we've got. So is our keto basics? Uh, meal prep and grocery shopping. So we're actually at the co-op right now, um, and there's so many like good things. Like I could literally spend like hours just walking around here. So. Meal prep for me, again, is like having something like a chia pudding. Um, and because I do have more carbs, I do a lot of baked goods because I need stuff that's going to be easy that I can take to work. So I make my bread and my bagels and my crackers. And so when I'm lazy, like my breakfast most mornings will be like an avocado bagel. And then like, if, or if I wanted to be super fancy, like I can make French toast or something else because I, I, I love those kind of comfort foods for me. Um, and then for me, I'd make a lot of curry. So I'll make a coconut curry, uh, like a Thai coconut curry or an Indian coconut curry. And you can eat that over like multiple days, just make a big pot of it. Um, and they're like my go-tos for most things, like curries and then like my baked goods, so. Yeah, and I have my shake every morning, for, except for this morning, I was running out the door and I'm really hungry as a result, but my shakes every morning. And then I pretty much just have to figure out the two meals in between and I will figure it out on Saturday or Sunday, buy only what's on my grocery list, and then eat that the entire week. So the same lunch all week, the same dinner all week. Sometimes I'll try to switch it up if I have like frozen okra in the freezer or something like that. But I found that the, the more consistent you are, the more you're gonna stick to your macros. And then you only have to figure it out once. If you know that this whole day is under 20 net carbs, you don't have to track it. Um, you know what's in it. Yeah, you know exactly what you're eating. So um, I usually do like a, a low carb, um, higher fat lunch, and then a little bit higher carb, lower fat um, dinner. And I've, I, we were talking earlier, I've re with my pea protein shake, I don't have to try to add protein in and I hit my protein goal because I get that 30 grams from my shake. And then tahini has a ton of um, protein, broccoli, spinach, like everything else that we eat as vegans, I don't, I don't eat soy anymore, so I don't have tofu or anything, and I've been hitting my macros just fine. So planning, um, using an app, but just even if it's just one day a week to track, I think it makes a huge difference. Yeah, no, for sure. And, like, you won't have to track forever. Like, once you are disciplined at the start and learn what the carb counts are of everything, you will get to a point where you won't have to track everything because, like, I look at a meal now and I can, like, go, oh, this is yeah. two, this is two, this is one, this is, like, okay, this meal is, like, eight grams of carbs. And you don't track calories because, like, in your head, if you know how much protein and carbs, the calories will usually just kind of fix themselves. And because we're on keto, like, calories don't matter as much. I mean, they do matter, and, like, Carl's going to yell at me again. <laughs> um, but it, does, it doesn't matter as much because you're a fat burner primary. The reason you have to cut calories so hard on a regular diet is because you need to switch from burning carbs to burning fat, and you need to cut your calories to force your body to do that. We're already fat burners, so you just need to like decrease your like macros by a little bit, and you'll burn those extra calories from your body, not from your diet. And if you cut your calories too much, you run the risk of putting your body into starvation mode, which is going to slow your metabolism, which is going to slow your fat loss. So you just need to be in a small deficit every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you guys should be losing weight comfortably without, like, sacrificing, you know, oh, my God, it's so restrictive. Oh, I yeah. can't eat anything. Well, keto, that's the, one of the bonuses of keto is that you don't have to restrict so much. And, I mean, I personally, I fast a lot of times. Like, most days, like, I haven't eaten anything right now, and it's like, 10, 20. I probably won't eat till like two or three o'clock. Just have a couple of coffees. Um, and so you can always try and introduce like fasting into your diet as well and like kind of work that into there as well. Yeah. And I heard something the other day, who knows where, because I'm in like 8,000 keto groups, but there's a difference between um, fasting, which is under, under like 200 a day, like versus just eating really low calorie. Like mm -hmm. if you're eating 500 calories, you're not intermittent fasting and you're not eating your macros. So you're in this weird middle zone where you're going to make yourself sick and you're going to go into that starvation mode and whatnot. So either fast or eat, yeah. but you can't be in between. You can't say I'm going to have 600 calories and I'm not going to meet any of my macros. You're yeah. not fasting and getting those benefits, but you're not eating and getting yeah. those benefits either. So um, you have to you pick, have to, one. Yeah, pick you have one. to pick one. You can't fast and cut calories. You do one or the other. They're not 
doing both is just not going to be healthy at all. So. And if you still believe in calories in, calories out, go buy the obesity code. Join us in Vegan Keto Made, or Vegan Keto Book Club, <laughs> and then you'll learn why that cutting calories will not sustain you for the long run. So keto versus um, calories in, calories out. Perfect. Pick keto all the time. Personal. Yeah. Personally, that is my philosophy. Perfect. Oh, here we go. Protein. The protein, oh, protein. thing. Well, like I said before, if if you're not doing a protein powder, do a protein do it. powder. Every like, day. Well, yeah. like every day. Every other day, even. Like, if you just throw in, a, like, a protein shake every other day, your body's really smart. Your body, your liver can store aminos. So as long as you're getting them, like, all in a period of a few days, your body can make its own protein. But in keto, we are lacking a couple of aminos. So it's like, I find that by adding that pea protein mm -hmm. in like every couple of days, it has the extra lysine and the methylene or whatever it is. Yeah, all those acids. The right? other two that are slightly lacking in our diets, and it bumps everything up enough to make the full protein panel. So, oh wait, where did Meg go? We didn't. Well, I just realized Meg wasn't back. Hold on, I'm gonna bring her back while you guys are talking. For life. Oh, I, I don't think I can. I don't know how to do it. I oh, I think like I have to do it on. Sorry, I just realized that Meg was gone. There we go, there. Yeah. But does that... Click on it. No, that oh. one. That one. Let's see if that works. There we go. We're going to make Meg come back, Let's whether she works. wants to or not. Um, yeah. I, you declined it. Wow, okay. Send us a voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> um, I use Vega Essentials Vanilla um, because... It has a lot of those micronutrients that I felt like I was cheating veganism by not eating those things. And so it supplements me that way along with my greens powder. It fills a lot of those gaps for me, which is essential 10 greens. It's 13 grams of fiber, one net carb. Um, and that, I think the question also said calcium. Between those yeah. two, like I, I, I downloaded really the chronometer app and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have so much work to do. Like this is my next project to make sure yeah. my vitamins and minerals and everything. And I downloaded it, put my food and I was like, oh. Yeah, I got everything. So yeah. and I'm for cool. me, yeah, for me, like I always, I we do drink fortified milks, and that's one of the good things about vegan milks okay. is they're almost always fortified. So I don't take any supplements. Like I don't take a B12. I don't take a multivitamin. I don't take anything because between how much soy milk I drink and how much nutritional yeast I eat, <laughs> my, like, my like macros, it's like my micros, I should say. Like I hit my nutrients like every day. So I drink like about a cup of soy milk a day between my coffees and smoothies and everything else that I cook with. And then I usually like have like maybe two or three tablespoons of nutritional yeast a day. That's like if you put that in, like all of your micronutrients are hit like super easy. Yeah, if um, you're if you're new to veganism, and you don't know about nutritional yeast. Um, it's super important. Um, it's almost all of my B12 that I need is just from nutritional yeast. Yeah. So you hear about people who are like, oh, if you're vegan, you're deficient. Not if you are sub <laughs> like eating foods that have B12, then you're not. So um, Just a little bit red, Meg. Just a little bit. Just, yeah. it's just a touch crispy. It's okay. So it's floating today, so I'll probably look uh, somewhat similar. I had my sunscreen on the counter, and I said, don't forget your sunscreen. Don't forget your sunscreen. And then I walked out of the house halfway here, and I said, oh, sunscreen. Sunscreen's on the counter. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. What time um, is it? I don't have it's a time. only. Uh, I don't know what time it is. Hey, Pam. Twenty-seven ish something says my oven. But we'll try and get through these. We've got like a couple more. Uh, soy free. This huh. one. This one's a soy free. <laughs> um, I am soy free, and I also just tried. I said I'm not gonna eat any fake meat products at all. So no Beyond Meat, no nothing, because I'm gluten free as well. So that left me with pretty much. I know TVP or anything like that. And it's actually, we were talking about this earlier, it's been really easy um, for me to do, which is because of the pea protein shake. So if you have that shake, that's 30 grams of protein right there. The other, I have to, I'm supposed to be between like, you know, 55 and 65. And tahini, um, chia seed, like all the other foods that we eat being vegan have so many grams protein that you add them up and you I don't even think about it if I am a little bit lacking in a day I'm usually like some sacha seeds which I you said you don't like I love sacha seeds I'm sorry for all of you who tried them on my recommendation <laughs> and hated them you can send them to me just pm me and just dump them in a bag and just ship them on to me um or almonds just some sort of nut usually will <laughs> will fix that we should, should be, be sponsored oh, by Vega wait, I do have to say that I I chatted with Vega and I was like you know you don't have the amino acid profile and I really need that and if I can't get that I'm not going to be able to you know recommend macros. it anymore and they email me right back and they're like here it is please <laughs> yeah but Joseph we can only see Meg because we invited her 
Yeah. So yeah, we can't, we can't see you guys. Don't worry we if you're like peeing or something right now, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was laying in bed when you sent the request and Jackson's like, he scooted away from me. I was like, I'll go in the living room. <laughs> no, and, but Meg's uh, also mostly soy free too, right? Yeah, I noticed that I have, it depends on the form that it comes in. I noticed that I have like the most problem when it's like tofu. Um, I've tried a little bit with tempeh and it's, it's okay. It's not as horrible, but not enough for me to be like, okay, I'm just going to eat like a ton of tempeh all day. But I noticed like because of the fermentation process, tempeh seems to be a bit more gentler. But when it's going, when it's in its local form, especially there's this one by Wildwood that's like a sprouted, sprouted bun, yeah. Right. It, I can, it just feels like a brick in my stomach. And it's like, well, I guess I'm not digesting this for like 24 hours. Like that's what it feels like. Um, but other than that, like when soy does come into my way of eating, it's for the most part very limited. Um, so like my, my week of eating, like I don't plan for there to be any soy. So if it is, it's just like, okay, well – it's just kind of come in by by chance so it's not something that i plan to regularly incorporate and i feel good about that i think and like minimally processed foods things like that like once you kind of get used to that that's where it's like well i don't really want anything else because i feel like I'm yeah. driving on this day of the day and i don't want to give up like this great digestion that I got going on or my energy or whatnot. So yeah. And I feel like once I kind of incorporate like tofu into that, it's just like, I just feel like I ate, you know, yeah, so, yeah. and I'm not digesting anything. No. Yeah. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have eaten a giant bag of soy jerky both times I reintroduced soy. The whole soy. bag. Yeah, the whole bag, both times, the whole thing. The three servings. So it might have been one. something to do. Yeah. So maybe I'll try tempa. Um, again yeah. and see kind of what it does but yeah and that's the thing like if you're allergic to something you will know that you're allergic to something like you will have symptoms like you will get indigestion you will get like different mm -hmm. so if it's like if you don't get any symptoms to soy then you're 99 percent probably fine i actually went to my naturopath and got a full blood panel done with all of my allergens and i came back with gluten dairy and eggs so no wonder I was sick for so long when like oh, most gosh, of my gut yeah. was made up of dairy, yeah. gluten, and eggs. So if you're worried about this sort of stuff, just go and get a blood test and they can tell you what you're allergic to. If you're getting symptoms, then you're allergic. And be very cognizant. Uh, yeah. It might not be like you're not going to break out in hive, no. but it might be you like feel sick, you're more like tired. indigestion and like lethargic no. and things like that. Um, or, or swelling. Or hormonal yeah. issues. There's lots of like um, actual signs that you are allergic. It's one of the top five allergens. You got dairy, gluten, eggs, uh, peanuts, and soy. They're the top five allergens. A lot of people are allergic. But if you're not allergic, then soy is completely fine. Like I've written articles about this. You can Google this. It's not a. It's not an issue. Soy is fine unless you have an underlying medical condition. Like most people should eat it. And like being a chef, like. I don't know what I would do without my soy. It's so versatile. Like I eat like probably two or three servings a day between uh, soy milk and tofu and tempeh, and edamame or soy flour or like soy sauce or like there's just so many different things you can do with it. So if you want to have a varied diet, don't be afraid of soy unless you're allergic to it. Like it's super healthy. It's really low carb, high protein. It's awesome. You can put it in anything you can have it for breakfast lunch dinner smoothies desserts like everything so now with that being said if you are soy free or have to go soy free i do not feel deprived at all no. by not having soy so would it be nice to have it probably but yes. do i want to sacrifice your health yeah right? no. no so you could go either way if you can eat it love it use it if you can't don't don't feel bad. Don't there are substitutions for everything too, right? So yeah. it's like there's lots of substitutions if you can't have it. Um, it's usually using uh, substituting nuts. Like most nuts can be substituted in for like a tofu. They make hemp foo now. They make yeah. soy out of hemp. Yeah. yeah. So there's lots that. of like different things, but just there's a lot of people that are just afraid of soy because it's soy, and like you just don't need to be afraid of it. It makes your life easier yeah. um, for sure. And I just want to comment on um, Heather, um, is it pe Peely Nuts? I have only found those once and they were $6 per serving. 
and that was so not realistic. So any of you have um, peely nut, like a dealer somewhere that you can hook me up with some peely nut <laughs> self serving? Like yeah. that'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, uh, Ezra, um, right now, well, I haven't had sweeteners other than monk fruit and stevia since April 24th. I cut soy and sweeteners at the same time, dropped like eight pounds off after a couple months yeah. stall. Um, and then in the last 14, 15 days, I haven't done any monk fruit or stevia except in my protein powder because I'm not willing to give that up. Yeah. Um, but I also cut berries and really anything super sweet just to yeah. see how those cravings diminish. And I actually found that nut butters um, cause me to have like sweets cravings because they are on the sweeter side. Um, so I don't use stevia. Yeah, I do. Um, again, cause like, all of mine, like we're kind of on the different ends here. Like hers is like super strict because um, I'm mean, like health like, problems. She's got like and, health, yeah. like it's like underlying medical issues like make her like be this strict. And she's found it and it works really well for her and she feels really good because of all these things that she's dealing Which with. Which is kind of a little more along Meg's line. Too, yeah, same sort of thing. Like for me, like I didn't do this for medical reasons. I did this because I have a, heat, a history, oops, excuse me, uh, of eating disorders. I had binge eating disorder, disorder and bulimia for like most of my adult life caused by carb cravings. And so when you take out the carbs, I no longer am suffering from an eating disorder. So it's like, I'm doing it purely as like to control this. When I eat keto, I don't get cravings. So for me, like I can eat, I know what feels good for me and they, I can have these artificial sugars and they don't trigger my binges. So it's like, that's, that's amazing for me because usually a lot of people with sugar addiction, like eating anything sweet can trigger their carb addiction or their sugar binge, right? But for me, like it works well for me and it doesn't trigger me. Um, so I do include them in my diet and also I do have a higher carb tolerance, which means that I am including baked goods and breads and things like that too. Um, but it works for me. It's completely like, see how it works for you. So I don't like stevia. Um, I don't usually use stevia. I only use it like if I have to, like right now I'm traveling. So I have like that little teeny bottle that I uh, put in my coffees and stuff. But at home I use Swerve. I use erythritol. Um, I use it everything. So I have the powdered form and the granulated form depending on what I'm baking. And I love it. I love the taste. It doesn't, it's not overwhelming. It doesn't have like this really weird aftertaste for me. So in like all of my baked goods and fat bombs and things like that, I use Swerve. Um, I've got a monk fruit sweetener as well, which is a, a monk fruit erythritol blend. Um, I've used that in a few of my baked goods. It's really sweet. It's like super, super mm -hmm. sweet. Um, it's also really nice. So it just, it's all an experiment. So you, yeah. you do you. Try it, see if it works. If you are stalling, try taking it out. Yeah, there's pea there protein stall, without right? stevia. Like I yeah. use Vega, it has stevia, but yeah. you can buy just plain pea yeah. and get all those uh, Same benefits, yeah. yeah. I use the um, Now brands. Um, you can get it for like $17 on Amazon for like two pounds, or it's like two and a half pounds. It's like a huge like container. Um, it's unsweet and unflavored, and it's what I put in my bagels. I put it in my pancakes. I put it like, um, what did I make the other day? I put it in my um, my buns that I made. I made some um, almond flour buns, and I added the pea protein. I made brownie bites, and I added the pea protein to up the protein. So it's another good way to kind of sneak in extra protein. Um, and yeah, it's really, really versatile. Yeah. So that's the one that I use. And I just wanted to touch on something. Um, we are kind of like really opposite yeah. ends of our like story spectrum. <laughs> um, and I used to really restrict calories. Like I'm talking eating like every three days and it would be like a Diet Coke and a Snickers. Um, and I've actually found a lot of people say, I don't want to track because I'm afraid it's going to start all those demons again. And I found that tracking, if I phrase it to myself as I'm tracking to make sure I nourish my body and I hit my Absolutely. protein then that makes me feel like I'm doing something good for myself. I don't, I don't use tracking to restrict. I don't look at the calories. Every day it says I'm over my calories because it has me super low, and that's not what I'm looking at. Am I getting my amino acids? Am I getting my B12? Am I getting my protein? And I think that's important, and it makes me not restrict. If I don't track, I'm either going to eat nothing or I'm going to eat everything. So I have to track. And then also, um, since some of you are kind of new and don't necessarily know what health problems I had, I just wanted to touch on um, – James's comment real quick. I had severe digestion issues, IBS, chronic fatigue, caffeine dependence, brain fog. I mean, you name it. Um, and they're all maintained. Like I slept, I got home at like midnight last night. I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning um, and I'm good. I used to need to sleep 12 hours a day. I would sleep up to 17 hours sometimes um, a day. And now 
in six, seven hours, I'm perfectly fine. So all of that's been maintained just on, on vegan keto, not on veganism alone. Yeah. Um, vegan keto is really where it was at. Yeah. So. so I lost 50 pounds originally when I, like, I went to the naturopath. Like, I was having super, like, bad digest. I had GERD so bad that I was on medication that I had to take every day until I went to the naturopath and they did all my blood work and I came back positive gluten, dairy, eggs. So I cut everything out of my diet and went vegan, lost 50 pounds, but I could only maintain it by going to the gym five days a week. Like I was just like, I had to exercise in order to keep my weight down. It just felt really unnatural for me. So I ended up putting on back on like 20 pounds, which I've then come back down again on keto. So on the vegan keto, it completely controls all of my cravings and all of my, um, like my like binges and that sort of thing. So I don't, I don't even go to the gym anymore. I go to yoga like twice a week. I lost 22 pounds, no exercise, not like, like yoga, like two days a week. That's all I did. And it's like maintaining, like I probably eat between 15 and 2000 calories a day. I don't track and I'm maintaining my weight. And like, that's never happened in my life. Like every time you just let it go, like the weight creeps on and creeps on and creeps on. Next thing you know, you're like 20, 30 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. This is just so easy. And there's like no tracking at this point. So, and, and that's what happened to me the last year. Um, before I went keto, the weight just slowly, slowly, slowly. Back on. And my students were like, when are you going to tell us you're pregnant? Like, we know there's a baby belly. And I'm like, guys, I'm just fat. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Like my pants didn't fit. My dresses were like the only things I could wear and I, I had to make a choice. And so I lost um, about, I haven't weighed myself in a couple weeks, but it was like 35 pounds or so um, that I lost in this whole journey from the last year. Mm -hmm. um, and Ezra, I do want to say I do have caffeine. Um, I could probably do without it. Before I would drink, I think it was like four or 500 milligrams of caffeine a day just to maintain um, being awake at work. And I was still in a brain fog like constantly. Yeah. And now I drink it like, sometimes I'll dump it in my, my shake and that's one cup. I was drinking 48 ounces of coffee before work every day just to wake up enough to go to work. Um, so now one cup, eight ounces is super cut down. Um, and people have said like, what, what's different about you? Like you're more alive now. Like you just have more energy and there's something I'm like, well, I feel like I, it's like, it's like, I can see the world in color. Like I was living in black and white before and all of a sudden now like the world's in color. And I think that has a lot to do for me personally with cutting sweeteners because I didn't, that was a year in my journey and I didn't get all these benefits until I cut those sweeteners in the soy. So, um, if you're kind of like not sure if this is working try cutting some things out go back to basics um and see how you feel yeah for sure. yeah and i yeah i can't work out like i said i have this really cool thing called thoracic outlet um syndrome where my left arm doesn't work right so you try lifting weights when you can only use one <laughs> arm. Super on one side and then yeah. nothing um, on the other so all right, let's get another question. Um, so it was just asking oh. about the apps that we're using. So like I've always used chronometer or chron chron chronometer. Like I don't even know how you want to say it. Chronometer, let's just say say whatever you want to say, tomato, tomato, um, because it breaks down your micronutrients. Um, so you can see your full protein amino acid breakdown. You can see all of your micronutrients, all your vitamins and minerals, plus your macros, which is how I figured out, like I was hitting my protein macro every day, eating soy and hemp every day. Um, and I was still lacking in a couple of the amino acids, which when I added the pea protein, it bumped me straight over and like filled in all of the gaps because in a traditional diet, uh, vegan diet, um, you get beans. the protein combining thing is does have a like a little bit of truth to it because like uh, beans and rice like in grains have complementary protein uh, amino profiles so when you eat them together over a period of a few days they fill in all the gaps the only a hundred percent like actual full protein that we can eat is soy so if you're not having soy you definitely need to kind of be conscious of these things of course but i eat soy every day and i was still lacking in a couple of things because i was only eating like one or two portions a day so if you're eating large portions it would be enough but because we're not eating like 500 grams of tofu a day it was still lacking in a couple of the aminos so just be conscious of that and then that's why I love chronometer, yeah. but then she was using Lose It, which is like way cuter. Yeah, this is, I, I went between my fitness pal and Lose It. I've been using Lose It since like 2012, and it's just cute. And it, if I'm gonna have to track religiously for you know my health reasons, I want something that I like to open and I like to use, use and it. it's cute. And then I make my photo grids every night and share them, and that keeps me accountable. So yeah. Um, 
And double check whatever app you're using, um, double check the first time you put a food in that it matches what it's supposed to because sometimes I'll scan something and like it'll say 30 grams of sugar instead of zero grams of sugar. So you, you might have to edit something. So if you're tracking, just be cognizant of, yeah. of that. So it's like fun, basically the answer is find something that you're going to use. Like if you find that like it's not it's like clunky and you don't like using it and it's too hard to put stuff in, you're not going to use it. Um, you know, if you're a little bit of a nerd like me, like I love that sort of thing, um, like looking at all of those macros and like I found that really interesting. Um, so I like using that, but it doesn't break it down into meals. Like it's just one big yeah. clump and it's very kind of clunky. Um, it's not pretty to, to use, but it's very informative. Yeah. So it's like find something that you like and that's easy. Um, my fitness pal doesn't use net carbs so you always need to lose it yeah so with those two you need to make sure that you're actually minusing the fiber off of everything um chronometer uh, does so it has a keto setting so you it can it will set like your carbs of this and your protein and your fat in a keto way and track it everything with net carbs so that's another reason why i really like it i don't have to worry about it it's all net carbs so just find something that you like using for sure yeah. all right okay so let's go let's see if we go um, the dairy free. Okay, so we have more questions. Like, so dairy free options. Like, what do we use for like uh, sour cream and like uh, cream and milk and like all that sort of stuff? I think it depends again if you're soy or not. If you're or and how high or low your carbs are. Um, Kite Hill has cream cheese and sour cream. That's almond. I mean, not sour cream. Yogurt that's almond based. Um, super low carbs, no sugar added. Um, diet cheese is great, but it's high in carbs. carbs. We were looking at some cheese downstairs that somebody posted. And I was like, oh my God, I want this cheese. And it was like yeah. Yeah, six, six grams, six for grams like of carbs for a little tiny piece. Um, but for milk, the Califia Farms yeah, has I a like ton that. of milk, yeah. Ripple. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's lots of brands now. You just gotta read the backs yeah. for sure. Look for unsweetened. Look for the carb count. Um, if you're soy sensitive, look for yeah. for something that doesn't have soy in it. But I think you can find cream cheese with no soy, cream cheese, yogurt, um, like sour creams and stuff. Like I find there's the sour like Daya does a um, cream cheese. Kai Hill does a cream cheese. Oh, Daya uh, does. Um, Soy yeah. free as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Diet soy free and Kite Hill soy free as well. Mm -hmm. um, the Tofuti stuff, usually all is soy. So, like, just, like, have a look and just see which one tastes good to you. Like, there's lots of different things. And now. Jennifer also makes her own um, cream cheese with macadamia nuts, which we also discovered. I'm just going to tell you all this right now. Do not chop up macadamia nuts and put them in your fat bombs. Something about the oil, it makes it super bitter. And I thought I just screwed up, but then she did the same thing. So... <laughs> Um, whole macadamia nuts are great chopped it like releases something that That's not hilarious. yeah not good so you can chop walnuts up and it doesn't do that um but don't don't chop up macadamia <laughs> okay. Nuts, so. uh, okay last question is supplements what supplements do we use so well apart from the electrolytes i don't take any vitamins um, I do take vitamin D in the winter, though, so that's probably the only thing that I make sure I get extra. Yeah, um, I have a ton of vitamins, but, like, I have a ton of health problems, too. So, I'm well, I have them all in my cupboard. They're all arranged really nicely. I couldn't tell you. They're dust collecting on the top of them, um, but I have a multivitamin. I'm supposed to take um, 50 milligram or... Micro, I don't know what it is, 50 whatever of iron every day because I have really low ferritin. So I have plenty of iron, but not enough iron storage. Um, I'm supposed to be taking vitamin D in the Central Valley. You don't get vitamin D from the sun, so you have to supplement. Yeah. Um, vitamin B, I'm supposed to take, but now that I'm really doing um, nutritional yeast, I don't know if I'm yeah. going to need that anymore. Um, and then I have potassium and magnesium just in case. So um, do I have supplements in my cupboard? Absolutely. Have I been consuming them? Um, no. Did my doctor yell at me because my vitamin D hasn't come up since the last time I did blood work? Yes, she did. And I said, well, I haven't taken it, so that's probably why it hasn't increased. Yeah. And then I got the finger wag at me. Yeah. So, so D um, is like the one that I would like 100, 100% mm -hmm. always. Everyone needs D. Doesn't matter like where, like especially like I'm from Canada, like we don't get vitamin D like 90% of the year. I think there's like two days in August yeah. that we might get enough. So I always, always supplement. But most of my diet already has D in it from the soy milk and the uh, nutritional yeast. So it's like, that's usually okay. But definitely in the winter, I supplement D. Um, so. Yes, Ezra, I salt everything. Salt my water, salt my All smoothie, salt. salt my food. All I do um, pink Himalayan salt. I do no salt. I do pickle juice. I do pickles. Like yeah. pickles, if you can find no carb pickles, 
Um, that's my Meg. favorite snack. <laughs> Meg, are you a pickle fan? Meg's a pickle uh, girl. Yes. Oh, I should show you. I have so <laughs> salt I'm, the pickles. Seen, uh, like pickled <laughs> radishes. So um, here's my little setup. Ooh. So those should be done probably in about um I think by midweek. So I went to a uh, garden pickles class like my boyfriend does all of the community classes coordination for the Olympia food co-op and so a co-worker and I went to the garden pickles one because it's all fermentation based and because I you know grew up on a diet of antibiotics um, I'm an 80s kid like um, my Yeah, I don't see that too. Local crowd that we have here is delicious, um, but it's also like eight to ten dollars a jar. Yeah. So even with like the discount that we get, it's all kind of like it. It I think is almost a way of care to kind of be like, okay, I care about you enough that I'm going to, you know, ferment my own veggies, and you know, you get this gut health and save you money, like. I love saving money. It's so much cheaper. So much cheaper, for sure. And it's like literally just like to make your own sauerkraut is like cabbage and salt. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. You don't even add water. So you just kind of massage it. And then like it actually like will have a little bit of water. It's like really cool if you can like Google like how to make your own My like kraut. Project. I know. It's yeah. so easy to do. Um, um, Ezra, I... Um, I track all the foods I eat with sodium, but I don't track how much sodium I add on top of that. But I did notice that um, when I was eating all the fake meat products before I quit soy, my sodium was really, really high without even needing to salt. When I cut that, it went down to about 1,500 and I wasn't salting. Yeah. And I literally blacked out, passed yeah. out, my legs stopped working. Like I yeah. couldn't get naked down the stairs. I had to lay on the patio outside and like yeah. get up strength to get up and go in the house. So now I salt everything. You don't it's high salt is not a worry on keto yeah. so salt 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 if i start to feel a little woozy i'll drink some yeah. pickled pickle juice, juice. Um, i drink sauerkraut juice like i was saying i was like hung over the other day because like i went to like my, my going away party and i had a couple of too many vodkas and like i'm like oh my god i'm just like so hung over i chugged a big thing of like my sauerkraut juice and my it was gone like immediately i'm like oh it's just missing my electrolytes so <laughs> totally it's like so good um so if you are eating a lot of processed foods like processed fake foods and stuff that's a good point like you're probably gonna be okay mm -hmm. um but the thing is that you don't retain any of that salt right because we don't retain electrolytes we literally just flush them all out so you need to be consistently replenishing them all the time because you're not storing them not, you're not storing a lot so you always need to replenish them a lot for sure and i do smart water about a big old case of it so i do that every day i drink the smart water down and then i refill with um filtered water and then dump my salt and lemon in so i'm getting double um electrolyte that way mm -hmm. for sure yay so, well that was that, that was our last question is there any other last questions before we go thanks guys for staying for the whole time that was fun yay thanks everybody for coming and asking your questions yes. it was really great yeah, coffee, <laughs> coffee who, who would leave and get coffee without you that's like cruel Rude. yeah jackson you hear that Thanks, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we'll do this again soon. So. Yes, yes, you should. Yes. You should request us to come do live or hang out. Yeah, questions. Tell them that we need to do hangouts because I'm really trying yeah. to push it, and they keep telling me no. Yeah, we're gonna try and do a Google Hangout, then we can like actually have other like everyone kind of chime yeah. in and stuff. So, okay, bye guys. Bye. bye. bye.